Welcome to United Prayer International, the home of the upper room. Praise the Lord. Once more time, it is a joy to come through to you. And it's a joy knowing that you are going to be watching once more time to learn how to get a hold of God and how to work, you know, uh, in your city, in your family, in your church by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So with us, we have um, a powerful theme Signs and wonders will follow a praying person. You don't have to follow those things. Signs and wonders will follow a praying person. Whether you're a man or woman or you're a young person, signs and wonders will come looking for you if you're a praying person. Amen. And so for that, we have none other than Bob Beckett. God has used him in a powerful way. Uh, Pastor Bob, thank you so much for being here with us. My honor, my pleasure. Wow, what a what a blessing! It's a treat for us to have you here, and we have uh, Pastor Louis Sainz, Amen. who's going to help us co-host. Praise the Lord! It's always a blessing to be here. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Pa Pastor Bob, maybe you can share some few words of greetings to everybody. Sure. Victory Outreach. I just want to encourage you as you uh, march into the future here. Future's coming at us hot and fast. It's unpredictable, like it's never been predictable before. Mm. But something very predictable is about to happen to the church, not only in America, but mm. the world. And you're a part of it. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you a little bit about Pastor Bob. You know, those of you that may not be familiar uh, with, with his person. I mean, God is using him through the, throughout the decades, actually. You know, but that's because he believes in the power of prayer. Amen. Pastor Bob, he, he has two daughters, four granddaughters, amen, and also his wife, Susan. And together they pastor a church called the Hiding Place in Hemet. Dwelling Place. A dwelling place. <laughs> a dwelling place in Hemet. Uh, they, you know, he actually worked, um, you know, as a, one of the ministers in Melody Land. That's where Mary and I used to go at, in our early ages, age of being saved. As a matter of fact, he, she got baptized by the Holy Spirit there. Amen. As we were there, there was a lot of powerful signs and wonders that were taking place there mm -hmm. on, that, on, on those days. Amen. And um, also, uh, he, he also um, authored a book, you know, that I think that everybody knows, uh, Commitment to Conquer. This is a powerful book that deals with spiritual mapping. It deals with what to do in spiritual warfare. And later on, we're going to learn a little bit more through, uh, through Pastor Bob. He also was able to pastor or rather teach uh, spiritual warfare and prayer at Fuller Theological Seminary, which I did some of my studies there uh, with Peter Wagner, amen, one of the legends in the world in regards to church growth. And um, he worked alongside with Cindy Jacobs and many other different people. Doug Sheets, uh, what, what, Chuck, um, Pierce. Chuck, Chuck Pierce. Pierce. Chuck Pierce gave me a prophecy about prayer. Wow. It's amazing how, you know, how God used this, this, this man to, to help us right. along our journey. And also, uh, so anyways, I want to make sure that everybody, you call somebody right now, stop and tell, call you your brothers, your Share. sisters, your loved ones, Come on. to, 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 to look into what's happening right here because God's going to minister to people. Your breakthrough is about to take place. Amen? Wow. Praise the Lord. Uh, Pastor Lou, give us a few words. How are you doing and how are your church is doing there in New York? Well, it's awesome to be here today in great company. Uh, Pastor Augie, Pastor Bob, and uh, most of all, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Come on, yes, somebody come on, is here with us. But uh, it's always a blessing to be in the upper room, you know, going way back to when I got saved uh, under your ministry, Pastor Augie, uh, we were taught about prayer, you know, and if you want to, you know, if you want to stay, you got to pray. If you want to last, you got to fast. And so those are all principles that we learned mm -hmm. uh, from the gate. So it's always been a part of our life. And now we're going on 29 years of being saved, wow. Wow. Um, 24 amazing. years of pastoring. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I credit um, the same power to the Lord, obviously. It's the Holy Spirit, but it's the, the discipline, the delight of prayer. Mm -hmm. 
mm. uh, of just seeking the Lord. And we've seen many things. And I thank God for Pastor Sonny, Sister Julie, for this ministry. Yes. Because we've been taught not to seek the blessing, mm -hmm. but to seek the blesser. Yes. Not to look for the signs, but to seek the one that does the signs. And we know it's not man. We know it's the Holy Spirit. So it's a blessing here to be here today. But earlier we were ta I was talking to Pastor Bob and we were talking about the book. Yeah. And um, we, uh, many years ago it was written. It's a powerful book. I want to recommend it. Uh, if you're viewing today, I want you to press share. I want you to put a comment. Let us know where you're visiting from, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook. Just get it out or because you're going to be blessed today. Yes. And this is a powerful book. And, and what ministered to me most was not only a commitment to conquer, which is the title, but it's a commitment to your city. Yes. It's a commitment to the territory mm. where God has placed you. And I, I believe that as men of God ministers, God has placed you somewhere and don't give up. Don't don't throw the towel. You keep fighting the fight through prayer and, and in God's timing, you'll see the breakthrough if there's a commitment to that region, that city, that land where God has placed you. So it's a blessing to be here, Pastor. God is good. Praise the Lord. We have our text today before we jump into um, uh, some of the content that we have here today. We have a, a Mark chapter 16, verse 15 through 18. Again, the question is, who's following who? Mm. That's important. Mm. And, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. Amen. It's a promise that sick That's will right. recover. Wow. Now, there are many people, Pastor Bob, that um, they're, they're just, they're looking for the latest evangelist mm -hmm. that doesn't want, uh, that does signs of wonders. And there's, there's people that follow signs of wonders. Right. It really bothers me when they have to do that, you know, because... They just live from one revival to another revival to mm. the next revival. They never right. experience yeah. revival for themselves. That's right. That's you know, true. You, 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 yeah. know, you know yeah. much about the... We've, right? we've, I've watched over the decades. Revival comes and revival goes. Mm. But when people, like you said, chase the revival, they're going to end up being lost. They're mm. going to miss the whole point sure. because the revival, like you said, comes from within. It's a personal revival. Yes. If you don't have personal revival, corporate revival is not going to produce what it could. Corporate re revival becomes a church growth issue rather than a kingdom growth issue. Right. So if you're right with God, right, if you're a praying person, right. if you're a person of fasting and praying and faith, believing the word of God, signs and wonders will come looking for you. That's right. Right. Now, we haven't talked about this, and this not in the notes, but um, mm -hmm. I, I think I was doing a, many years ago, I was doing a prayer conference in Amsterdam. Oh. And one of the pastors there says, have you seen this tape? And it's called Transformation. Oh. You know, about pastors coming together in Colombia and in different places. Mm -hmm. And how, by the power of prayer, United prayer that everybody comes together, God will answer, He will uphold His Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and there will be transformation in the city. Right. In some cases, the whole country was transformed. I believe that Hemet is in there somewhere. It is. <laughs> right? It is. It, it, can you tell us a little bit about, because I, I know that you, you were one of the tools that got used to transform the city because right. there was, I think, meth or I don't know what kind of drugs were involved yeah. in. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about. Hemet at one point was a methamphetamine manufacturing capital um, of the West Coast. At least that's the way it was wow. labeled. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a little dirt water out of the way town. Uh -huh. But what happened, Augie, is that we discovered the principles of spiritual warfare and strategic <clears throat> intercession mm -hmm. that commits itself to the community where pastors would come together and learn intercession mm. together and pray for the community and do spiritual warfare. Wow. And that was the bottom line issue. And everything in that video was the byproduct of strategic intercession. Mm. 
not just a group of people coming together and praying or pastors praying and bless us for and no more kind of thing. Mm. You know, we've said that before, but strategic prayer that knew yes. where the problem was, <clears throat> struck the problem until it changed. My God. And that, that, was, that was what actually began to transform the community. Mm. If it transforms spiritually and it doesn't transform physically mm. in the natural, how much transformation is that? That's right. So. Wow. That's community penetration for the purpose of community yeah. transformation. And that's what happened. I, 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 I saw that many, many, many years ago. Then I was also reading um, some material that, de that dealt with another revival that took place in Argentina mm -hmm. with Peter Wagner and I think it was um, Cindy Jacobs in the place called Residencia. Yep. Right? And, and also... You know, they were dealing with La Santa Muerte, mm -hmm. St. Death. You know, do, do you remember that? I was there. You were there? Yeah, <laughs> I was there. My God. Tell us a little bit about that. It How was amazing. Everybody coming together, they're able, through prayer, they're able to transform our whole right. entire community. Right. They caught this concept about strategic intercession and coming together to pray over territorial issues. Mm. They learned to deal with principalities and powers. Wow. Mm. So they were not just dealing with the average, everyday, what we'll call grunt de mm. demonic entities. Uh -huh. They began to penetrate the realm of the supernatural. Wow. And it shook the place mm. up. It was absolutely amazing. I would not have believed it had I not actually seen it and experienced mm. it. Heavy. I watched it on the streets. People walking down the street would stop people Somebody would be walking down the street and they'd be limping. Two believers would stop them and say, can we pray for you? They didn't do anything but say, can we pray for you? Didn't wait for permission. Just bowed their head and started to pray. Unbelievable. And bang, the presence of God would hit the person <laughs> and they'd be healed. Wow. And they'd say, bless you. And they'd turn around and walk off. Wow, heavy. I mean, it was, it was mm. a powerful encounter. But to keep that, is yes. the where the work begins. Mm. Yes, yes. One thing to have it, it's another thing to hold it. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I, I pray that God will use us that way to transform. Right now we are involved in planning different uh, base churches in strategic mm. cities of the world. Mm. We started in Cape Town and we have another one in Panama, Guadalajara. Uh -huh. I remember them talking about the, the, the center's corner in, in Guadalajara. Mm -hmm. And we have a church not too far away from there. Wow, wow. You know, and uh, in two years, we have 400 people. That's amazing. But we had a little lot of prayer. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of prayer, you know, that, that went on. And, and I think that you guys probably setting the ways for the body of Christ, mm -hmm. you know, to really do this spiritual warfare. Right. You right. know, and I think a lot of times, Pastor Bob, we go into a city, traditionally, we send a, a couple we send a little team to go in there. They start evangelizing. But sometimes we are oblivious to the powers and principalities of the enemy. We don't know who's been, what demonic power is going to be there. And not just basically because I've been a little experienced in planning some, you know, some churches. I know that, past, that, that, that Satan is not going to allow the city to, right. to be given over to Christ that right. easy. Right. You got to put up a fight. That's right. That's right. And, but the fight is not just at the ground level. It's got to be at the strategic mm. spiritual level yes. where you reach into the principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness. That's why Paul was so clear in his definitive message about spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. If you penetrate into the realm of wow. the supernatural, and uh, that's, that's really what makes the difference. It's not just a revival for the church. Mm. It's a revival that For reaches the city. through the church yeah. into the community. Wow. And so it's not a church growth issue. It's a kingdom growth Ooh, issue. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. And, you know, sometimes as you say that, yes. earlier you mentioned about um, one thing is attaining it, another thing is keeping it. Yeah. And I think that's, uh, I think a lot of us have seen revival in our churches break out or in our cities. And sometimes they're just glimpses or, right. you know, just a quick thing and then things go back to normal. And um, what can you share about, you know, sustaining it? Like, what does that require? Yeah. Um, I know we're talking about 
signs and wonders. And I think this ties right in with signs and wonders because when you're able to enter that spiritual realm mm -hmm. where there's a manifestation on that, um, on the land right. with the people, then, but what does it take to keep that window open? Yeah. You know, what's required? Well, bottom line is even to get the window open, there has to be a territorial understanding. Mm -hmm. Most Christians do not have the Hebrew concept of land mm -hmm. and responsibility for geography. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And if you read from the New Testament all the way into maps, it's about land. It's mm -hmm. about a geographical commitment. Why was it that the Lord was so clear to the nation of Israel that when he sent her into bondage, mm. when he sent her out into Babylon, it was because she failed a Sabbath. Wow. Not the Sabbath of man, mm. but the Sabbath of the land. Mm. Mm. They, they were told in an agrarian society on the seventh year, to mm. you rest, rest the land. Yeah. Right? So you know what they did? They didn't work the land. They went to the Gentiles and said, we'll hire you to work our land wow. because we can't. And the Lord said, you're out of here. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That was a violation of territorial spiritual wow. issues. Wow. Mm. And so it's getting us back into the mentality of understanding how geographical the Bible is. That so much of our commitment as pastors and leaders to communities is based on a denomination or making a work or a church succeed rather than buying into the responsibility for the city. Yes. For the land. For the land. Yeah. Mm. And, and when we buy into the fact that we're pastoring a city, not just a building. Right. Yes. We're pastoring the people. of. And so your whole mind changes mm. and your dependency mm. in order to see the supernatural okay. is not dependent on LED screens or there the mist go. or the lights or, mm. or just having a good worship team. But it's actually on tapping in to the power, right? right. The, the source, the Holy Spirit that brings that manifestation of healings and mm -hmm. signs and wonders. So who are you following? Who's following who? Yeah, that's that's a right. question. Bottom line. Yeah, right? I just want to say there's nothing wrong with I have a big screen, you know, so do I. All this stuff, you know? <laughs> so, but yeah. you can't really depend on that. That stuff doesn't cast out devils. Doesn't transform. Right. That stuff doesn't heal the sick. Right. It is the power of God. Sure. It is the anointing of the That's Holy it. Spirit that breaks the yoke. Right. That is it. Praise the Lord. And, uh, you know, talk, still talking about Guadalajara because um, I, I remember uh, Peter Wagner talking about this geographical uh, location, mm -hmm. you know, and, and um, as the demonic power that he calls, um, says in the book of Revelation, Satan's Corner. Right. You know, so he's basically, you know, spiritual mapping. He says, identify what spirit is... It's That's over right. that region. That's right. Dethrone that spirit, and you're gonna see, uh, uh, um, you're gonna see a result, a right. positive result. Prior to that, Louis, there was no progressive church planning. Mm -hmm. All the churches were separate, but they came in, and they brought all the pastors together, right? And they began to pray. They identified the spirit. They dethroned the spirit, and churches began to spring all over the place. Mm -hmm. See. And so we came in, Louis and I, we went in there. Yeah, I took him, you know, as my little disciple. We got beat up, we got beat up by some gang members. <laughs> we got robbed. You know, we were gonna get yeah, robbed, we got out. stoned. We got stoned, we got really, really got stoned. <laughs> Yes, and, uh, we did. So then the next day. But the uh, Lord helped us. We got away. <laughs> but we did have a good they little run. Take the you got out with your lives. And we got out. We got out. <laughs> yeah. But, but but we went back. Yeah. The next day we went we back. We went back. My, my lip was busted. You know, yeah, but, yeah. We, we went, went back. We went back. Yeah. yeah. And, and because of that, Louis, a lot of the families there in that city, they're saved now. Yeah. Wow. Because of that. And in that city, in two years, we have 400 people. Wow. You know, there because again, it's not by mind or by power, it's by the spirit of God. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, I wanna just, you know, just encourage all the pastors and all the leaders that are watching that look, you know, going in there and evangelizing and having the van and having the music and having all those things, that those things are good. But I'm telling you, unless you identify what ruling spirit is there, mm -hmm. you know, they can very well defeat you efforts, you know, in trying to crack the city for Jesus. Uh, I went to Hollywood, you know, and uh, Pastor Sonny sent me to Hollywood in 1986. And I, 
in four years, I couldn't grow the church past 50 people. And um, so God led me to go on a 14-day water fast, mm. specifically to identify what city, was, what demonic power was over Hollywood. Wow. Because I was trying to come against witchcraft, right. homosexuality. All the uh, obvious. All, the, all, of the, all of that stuff, you know, immoral, you know, all that stuff. But the, on, on, on the way back after the 14-day water fast, the Lord showed me, says, what's controlling every demon mm. in that city is a spirit of immorality. That spirit of immorality is controlling, homo, you know, pornography, homosexuality, witchcraft, all the other kind of stuff. When we came against that, God gave me a plan to do a fasting for one year. Mm. In a little church of 50 people. Wow. Within five years, all the pussy cathedrals closed down. Wow. The prostitution rate dropped 84%, confirmed <sighs> by the police, police department. Uh, we, we were able to see, you know, got moved. Punk rockers got saved. Right. And two satanic churches that, that vowed to destroy us, they closed down within the one year. I mean, a lot of things happened, but it was because of a spiritual mapping. Because you penetrated the realm of the real problem. Mm. The real problem isn't in the natural, it's in the supernatural. Yes. That's why Paul was clear, principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness, where? Mm. Heavenly places. Oh my God. Mm. What, what's up here yes. rules what's down here. The church has been fighting down mm. here. Right. She has to learn to fight up here. Right, right. So we're, we're pretty much wow. fighting two Powerful. fronts. Powerful. Exactly. I think a lot of times as pastors, uh, possibly, we forget that we're fighting on two fronts. Mm -hmm. And it's the spiritual realm Amen. and Amen. Uh, the natural realm, the physical Amen. realm. And, and so as pastors, I think if we want to see these signs and wonders and we want to see the breakthroughs and we want to see the kingdom of, uh, of God expand our churches grow, then we have to have one hand in, in the natural or for lack of better terms, the natural, working with the city, the people, the land. But we have to have our other hand up in Come the on. clouds up in the, in the spiritual realm. Okay. And, and I think through teams of intercession, even connecting with other pastors yes. in the city mm -hmm. and coming together and praying. I know we're about to do a march in August. Peace in the Northeast. Uh, uh, Peace yeah. in the Northeast. And we're, we've already, we're teaming up networking with pastors of other denominations yes. wow. because we have a burden for our there city. Go. There you yes. go. And so now we're looking at a calendar to meet monthly, to pray, and we want to see that manifestation because yes. we can do the march. Mm -hmm. We can hand out the flyers. Mm -hmm. We can put up the resources. Yes. And possibly not much is going to happen unless first we're able to tap in into yes. that spiritual realm. You break yes. into that realm. You know, the Bible says that those who believe that the signs will follow those who believe, cast out demons and signs and wonders, basically. But we understand that the Bible says those who believe, you need to have faith, right? So in Matthew 17, 17 through, uh, through 21, uh, you know, the Bible gives us a scenario where a father brought his son to the disciples to cast, to, to heal him. He had a, he had a, a, a demon. And they could not kill, cast the demon out. So privately they came to Jesus and said, why is it that we could not cast him out? Jesus did it in a second and they couldn't cast him out. And then he, in verse 20, he says, because of your unbelief. Then he says, for I surely say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will be moved and nothing shall be impossible for you. However, this kind will not go out except by prayer and fasting. Fasted. You, you can bypass that. You cannot bypass right. prayer and fasting. You can't buy this in Costco. <laughs> you, you, you cannot just wish, you know, that you know, you're gonna that you're gonna be anointed and you're gonna have the favor. You need to pray the price. Yeah, there's a price. You need to pay the price. Yeah, there's there's definitely a price. And even as we yeah, look right. back in history at the great men and women that have been used to expand the kingdom of God mm -hmm. throughout history from the church to today, all of them paid a price. Each mm. and every one of them paid a price. Somehow, some way, in order to be a part of the expansion, yes. there's a price. And I think nowadays, you know, if we're honest, we don't like paying a price. That's right. You know, um, society today, 
uh, if you can if you can create something that fixes something fast, <laughs> you'll become a millionaire overnight. Mm. You know, we're looking for a quick fix. We're looking for something that doesn't cost much or there's not a price. And but in the spiritual realm and the expansion of the kingdom, because, mm. yeah. you know, it's like having events. We can have an event and have a thousand people show up, 500 people. But then the following Sunday, how many people are in church? Yeah. That's right. So that's a, like Easter, you know, Easter. I mean, I, I'm sure most of us, our churches mm. were packed out. But what happened the Sunday after Easter? That's reality. And I think sometimes um, in our culture, in our society, we get caught up in, in superficial, fast. How do we do it? Instead of paying that price, Pastor. Yes. Right. Like that, that woman we talked about that kept going to the judge and yes. bothering the judge and going to the mm -hmm. judge and consistently. And so I think that there's a price that has to be paid right. no pray. matter what. Pray the price. You have to pray the price. Yes. I like that. You, you cannot <laughs> fake. You cannot yeah. fake the power, the anointing of God. That's right. Right. That's right. right. That's you right. know, yeah. Yeah, there, there's a, Bob, maybe, I, what, what, Pastor Bob, I want you, maybe you can comment on this. We have the sons of Sceva's in Acts chapter 19, verse 11 through 16. It says, now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even the handkerchiefs, and aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil uh, spirits went out of them. So, uh, <laughs> you know, so then here the sons of Sceva, they saw this happening, and they said, we, <laughs> let's go ahead and do that. So, so the Bible says, that it says, we command you, we exercise you, by the Jesus that Paul preaches, or that Paul knows, come out of them. And the Bible says in verse 15, and the evil spirits answered and said, Jesus I know, and mm. Paul I know, but who are you? Come on now. And the Bible says that the spirit that was upon the person, they mm. went upon them Gave and them left a beat them down. naked. Right. Gangster slapped you them. You cannot fake the anointing of God. No. Right. Can you comment on that, Pastor? Absolutely. I think... It all always goes back to a fact. Dick Mills showed me something that kind of relates to this whole issue about the sons of Sceva. Remember it says in Acts, it talked about special miracles. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's right there in chapter 19. It says uh, special miracles. Dick said, Bob, look at this word. He showed it to mm -hmm. me one day. We were in his library. And the word special miracle means geographical or regional miracle. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so wow. all of a sudden it pointed to the fact that the sons of Sceva mm -hmm. were actually manifesting the geographical principality and power of the region. Mm. And Paul addressed <clears throat> that principality and power. Wow. It wasn't ground level spiritual warfare, just the simple, you know, easy. It was all out full tilt spiritual wow. warfare. In the geography, but in the spiritual side of it. Mm. And so the sons of Sceva represented principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness mm. in high places. This was not ground level issues. Mm. How could the sons of Sceva cast demons out unless they mm. had higher ranking demons? Mm. Wow. So now all of a sudden you realize you're dealing with ranks. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. That's heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, you know, it, it, it just, it, it's just something enlightened um, when I think about Victory Outreach mm. and, and I think about the prophecies that have been given to us by Dick Mills throughout yes. the years. And, you know, they're territorial prophecies, mm -hmm. if you think about it, because they're very specific as far as going into the inner cities, inner cities of, of the, the world. world. Yeah. You know, and I thank God for the body of Christ because we're everywhere. We're all over the world. But in Victory Outreach, there's been a special anointing to go into certain parts in certain cities, yes. and that's where God has anointed us mm. to do the spiritual warfare, yes. where you have the manifestation of a, of a killer, mm. uh, of a drug addict, of a prostitute, uh, of a gang member surrendering whatever it is, drugs, uh, uh, you know, guns, whatever, that lifestyle, and, and then weeping mm. before the power of a real God. I mean, that's something that is prophetic. Yes, yes. Because it was a prophecy. Yes, exactly. and, and it's it something that has to do with that spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that man can do by right. just handing out a flyer. Yeah. You know, it's something exactly. that has to happen in the spiritual yeah. realm. 
Uh, it just came to mind right now as you yeah. special miracles, you know, has to do with land, territory, areas where you're called specifically. Yes. I think earlier we were talking about pastors going into cities and not just going to any city, right. but knowing what city or what land or territory you're called to. Yeah. Yes. Right. Which makes a big difference in when we serve the Lord. Well, the Bible's really clear about geographical commitments. Yes. You know, there are regions. How many shepherds are shepherding the wrong flock? Mm. Mm. Right. Because they're not in the right geographical region. Right. Wow. They, exactly. they, they make that selection and they become powerless. Yeah. And that's funny because sometimes you see pastors going to cities and good pastors and they work hard and nothing happens. And then all of a sudden they're in another city for whatever reason and boom, it takes yes. off, you know? Yes. Man, that's, that's, that's something we it's need hard. to really think about that, and yes. look at. That deals with the ego of the shepherd because we naturally, who wouldn't want, who would want to go to a city that you'd think you'd fail? Yes. But if the Lord sends you to a city that you think you're going to fail and he sends you, you're guaranteed you won't fail if you're a good boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You do what you're told. And I think that's really what this is all about. Yes. Principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah. Yes. It's heavy. That's heavy. And signs and wonders follow. Signs and that wonders will follow out of a life of intimacy with God. There it is. And Pastor Bob, I heard you in one of your messages speak about about just intimacy, not, not just be impressed by the signs and wonders, but being impressed by being in his presence. Mm. Yeah. Like being in his presence is right. huge. Absolutely. And I heard you mention about, I'd rather be in his presence than yeah. all this other stuff. That's good. Let the other stuff be the outflow of being in his presence. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's number good. one. Can that's you good. comment a little bit on well, that? Well, it goes back to intimacy. Yes. Into me, he sees. Mm. Intimacy is Ooh. where. It I open me, up and on. I say, come in and, and expose me to what I need to see about who I really am and what I'm really supposed to do mm. and help me get past my ego. We all have it. Yeah. We, nobody mm. wants to fail. Exactly. Everybody wants to be loved and liked. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you follow the disciples, none of them got away with an easy life. That's right. right. John is the only one that <laughs> wasn't martyred and he suffered just as bad as everybody yeah, else. So true. that intimacy, that, that relationship where you can go into him and you can know him as we know mm. in a very intimate way so that when you're confronted by the world, the relationship on the inside of you is bigger than the world mm. on the outside of yes. you. Paul right. said this, he said, uh, he said, uh, uh, Ephesians 1 4 he said you were designed before the foundation of the world mm. okay now think that through for a minute I was designed before the foundation of the world that means when I came into this world he already had a plan and a design for me right if I can go to the place mm. and be right. in the place where right. he wants me to be right. Right. and he'll manifest right. his yeah. design and plan mm. through me yeah. and it won't be my denomination it won't be my desires right. it won't be the world it'll be what he wants and into me he sees. Yes, mm -hmm. that's, that's heavy. That's good stuff. That's heavy. Well, as we conclude, um, we want to encourage you, you know, and let you know that there's, there's a vast of mm -hmm. miracles, signs of wonders that God wants to do in your life yes. and also through your life. Amen. In John chapter 15, verse 1 through 5, the Bible says, I am the vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he... He, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it, may be, that it may bear more fruit. You are already cleansed because of the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me. That word abide in the Greek is meno. Mm. Abide in me. Meno with me. Be intimate with me and I in you. As the branches cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you, me, can do nothing. Wow. That's huge. That's... Without intimacy with God, without mentoring with God, we can do nothing. So pastors, I want to encourage you. Pastor Bob is going to say a special prayer for you. Leaders, 
uh, all the students at the Third Wave campus, all the students of the urban training centers, and everybody in the Victory Homes. And anybody, all the families that are watching through different parts of the world, we want you to know that God is on your side. Amen. And the best in your life is yet to come. Amen. Pastor Bob, can you maybe speak, give us some final words, and maybe say a prayer sure. for the needs of God's people? Sure. I want to encourage you that in these final days and this final hour, it's a chance for you to come closer mm. to the kingdom of God within you. Mm. Jesus said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the yes. world. John 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17, the epicenter of the Bible. You mm. can go all the way to Genesis 1 and all the way to Revelation 22. And right in the middle of that, Jesus said, mm. I will give you my personal wow. counselor. Wow. The one who walked me mm. through a life in the mm. natural as your personal sacrifice. Mm. I'm going to give the one that walked me through it. Yes. I'm going to give him to you. It's good. Mm. And that's what Pentecost is about, Powerful. a personal, intimate relationship. And if you want that, you desire that, or you have it, and you want more, believe me, there's more. Yes. yes. Believe me, you, you don't have it all. That's None of right. us do. That's right. And if you want that, just put your hand out towards the screen right now yes. as you watch, and let's we pray. Heavenly Father, yes. I come before you in Thank Holy you, Spirit. Jesus. Yes. I would ask that upon my yes. brothers and my sisters, yes, okay. yes. those that are so hungry for more of you, yes. Yes, that Jesus. Holy Spirit, you would manifest your presence, you bring the reality of your kingdom Hallelujah. Yes, Lord and Jesus. who they really are in you, bring the signs and wonders and the power yes. for this yes. final oh, push, yes. the final revival Hallelujah. in Jesus' Father. name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Bob, how can they get a hold of your book? Uh, go to Amazon. You can get an e-book or you can purchase it as a, as a regular book, normal book. Commitment to conquer. Amen. Praise God. God is on your side. Pastor Louis, final yes. words. Hey, man, we're, th this was just great. Thank you for your wow. time. We appreciate it. I just want to encourage uh, everybody that's plugged in um, uh, by the book. It's really, really an eye opener. And it's all through prayer. You know, we are Victory Outreach. We, we feel that we're the tip of the spear. God has put us out there and we need the Holy Ghost. Yes. We yes. need the direction of God. We need to be able yes. to discern the spiritual realm and, and get up in there so that we can see those treasures out of darkness that were prophesied and promised to us so many years ago by Dick Mills. Amen. And we've seen it come to pass, but we know that there's much, much more. So we just want to encourage you. Thank you for connecting. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to put a comment. Don't forget to send this yes. to somebody that you know needs to hear it. Remember, yes. there is power in prayer. Yes. And some things mm. need fasting as well. Mm. So That's we right. got to pray and fast to see the kingdom of God grow. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, stop following signs and wonders. If come. you pray, if you believe, Signs and wonders will come looking for you. Yes. You Amen. Yes. And so we encourage you to stay uh, in tune with the Upper Room every Wednesday at 1230. We come via YouTube, Facebook, and uh, you can actually just look at Victory Outreach International. Uh, and under, under the Upper Room, you can look at all the programs that we've done before. Mm -hmm. Every program is powerful content. And don't forget to pray for Pastor Sonny, sisters, they're traveling the world. Yeah. They're literally uh, winning the world for Jesus. I yes. mean, they're all yeah. over the place. And uh, we just, don't, just pray for safety. Pray that God will give them uh, grace and wisdom, mm -hmm. you know, to have uh, new countries open to us. Uh, pray for our world conference that's coming soon, July, 5th, July the 5th through the 8th, 9th. And also pray for Red. That's the time where we can reach around the world, all the leaders of the night. Mm -hmm. We're going to evangelize around the whole entire world. And then forget to, don't forget to, to pray for Run for Hope. Amen. That's the time where we can raise finances. Pray for me, everybody. I'm going to do something <laughs> crazy. I'm going to ride my bike from New York City to Los Angeles. Mm. That's crazy. And I pray that you sponsor me. It's Amen. crazy faith. All of this is just to raise finances so we can continue to fuel the gospel around the world. God bless everybody from the upper room. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, God Pastor bless Bob. Everybody. Thank you. Pastor Louis. Thank Amen. you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Powerful. You are.
family. Thank you for tuning in today to our live broadcast. You too can also be part of giving right there where you're at, whether you're at home watching or on the go. Simply by clicking on the link in the description below or do our Victory Outreach International app. Let's take a look at how easy it is to give. Generosity made simple. Text VOI to 77977. Select the giving link. Enter your amount and gift type. If it's your first time giving, enter your payment details and confirm your gift. Thank you for your generosity. Now we can stay connected wherever you go. Download the Victory Outreach app and stay connected with Victory Outreach International. Get important updates and announcements. Learn more about our ministries. Stay connected with events, prayer requests, and more. Watch the latest video in our media section. Easily share content on social media within the app. Give from your phone in seconds. A convenient way to stay connected. Yeah.